praise. I, I read a lot of astronomy and a lot of astronomers are perplexed, honestly perplexed, not, you know, not making a, a, a joke, but honestly perplexed. Why is the universe so big? And that's why we're spending all this money looking for other life forms in the universe and this whole exoplanet thing. And, and there's just this big push right now to go, there's got to be more people in this place. There's got to be more habitable planets in this thing. It's way too big if it's just a place for you and me. To which I go, I totally agree with that. If the universe was created just to house humanity, it's oversized on, 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 on a lot of ways. And, that, and, and astronomers struggle with that. They honestly struggle with that question and it causes them to think there must be more people. But if they knew the right reason for the existence of the universe, they wouldn't struggle. If they knew the universe's primary function wasn't to house humanity, but its primary function was to magnify the creator, then they would know it's not too big at all. It's just about the right size to give praise to God. And that's what the heavens are doing while we're here tonight. I want you to look in your scripture with me to Psalm 148 and then we'll come back and land on the question that we're posing, whom shall I sin? But the psalmist in Psalm 148, now there are 150 psalms, you know that, and they're not all sequential in terms of history and the way that they're pieced together, but this is the next to the last uh, of the two psalms from the end and it opens in such an incredible way Psalm 148 it says three powerful words praise the Lord now you think after 147 psalms you'd have sort of gotten your head around that idea but the psalmist is still making the point and there's an exclamation point there, which I like. I like punctuation, especially when it's helpful to bring the text to life for us. And it doesn't say, oh, praise the Lord. Oh, brother. Church lingo for I forgot your name. <laughs> you might as well just tell them you forgot their name, because if you call them brother, they know you forgot their name. But there, there, there's some kind of horsepower coming up here. And look at what the psalmist says. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. So he starts up here, right? <laughs> this is the way it works with God. God created the heavens and the earth. God always seems to want to frame things first with things that are bigger than us and then down to include our humble estate. And so he says, praise the Lord from the heavens and the heights above. But then look at verse 3. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created and he established them forever and ever he gave a decree and it shall not pass away and then he doesn't want you and me to be left out so he says praise the Lord from the earth and then he invites us into his course. I, I want to focus for a moment and I'm going to try something that might be a little risky at the Desiring God National Conference, but I'll give it a go. Um, he says, praise him sun and moon and praise him all you shining stars. And I just want you to know that's not poetic. That's not him just waxing poetic. That's not him saying, oh, this would be beautiful and sound nice. Uh, like a, it makes me think of a Chris Tomlin song. I'm going to sing, sing, sing and make music with the heavens. That's not just a poetic idea. That's really happening because stars don't just shine. Stars also sing. And this is pretty amazing. And can I just show you this for a second? Uh, Pastor Piper, can I just maybe jump there just for a second uh, uh, more? Um, I, I, I noticed I called him John earlier and Pastor Piper when I was asking just then. So um, you can tell it's a little different. Um, let me just show you a couple more stars. This one is called the Vela Pulsar. And it's magnificent. It's a thousand light years away. It's a highly magnetized neutron star. Right. <laughs> it simply means this star exploded 
into a supernova, and in the case of the Vela Pulsar, it collapsed back on itself in a magnetic entity, and as the pulsar, it began oscillating on its axis. This one oscillates 11 times a second on its axis. And that doesn't seem to move anybody tonight, so I just encourage you to, when you get back to the hotel, to oscillate 11 times a second on your axis, and <laughs> you will appreciate the Vela Pulsar in a different way. And as it is oscillating, you can see what's happening. It's shooting a radio frequency out of itself. And so not only do we have this amazing photograph, but we're determined to hear somebody speaking to us. And so through SETI and other highly advanced um, electromagnetic telescope programs, we're listening to the universe day and night. And I don't know if you know this or not, but when I say we, I mean we as in your tax dollars are paying large sums of money to build radio telescopes that circle the earth to continually listen to see if anybody out there is speaking to us. To date, we have not heard any intelligent life speaking back to us, but we have gotten something for our money because when they aimed the radio telescopes at the Vela Pulsar, this is what they heard. And this is what this guy does 24-7, day and night, 365 days a year. This is what, from a thousand light years away, the Vela Pulsar sounds like right now. This is it. Listen to this. about you, but I, that blew me away. I'm thinking, wow, this is incredible. You're like, well, what does it mean? I don't know. Is that some kind of Morse code for something or what, what, what does all that mean? I don't know what it means, but, and I don't want to, you know, go too crazy here, but maybe the Vela Pulsar got wind somehow innately of Psalm 148 verse 3 and says, it says, praise him, sun and moon and all you shining stars. We're a shining star. We should praise him. Well, how are we going to praise him? I know. Let's oscillate 11 times a second on our axis and see if we can send a radio signal into the universe that would join in the symphony of of God's praise from all creation. It's singing. The stars are singing to him. I recently stumbled on 47 Tuck. It's a, a beautiful uh, cluster of stars. We'll show you the picture of it here. It's about um, 16,700 light years away from where we are. And you can see just this brilliant, it looks like a sort of he shoved a lot of diamonds together into a pile. It's an um, unbelievable number of stars there. Look at these. They blow up that central place right there. There are 12 of these super giant blue stars in there. But the things that are of interest to us tonight are these millisecond pulsars. 23 millisecond pulsars are there. And we've recorded 16 of them. And right now tonight, while we're sitting in this room, the 16 recorded millisecond pulsars and 47 tuck are making this sound right now. beautiful who knew you know God has his own string section <laughs> he's isn't that beautiful and we just looked at one 11 times a second pulsar and 16 millisecond pulsars and you start seeing Psalm 48 come to life but look down at verse 7 it says praise the Lord from the earth you great sea creatures in all deeps fire and hail snow and mist stormy wind fulfilling his word mountains and all hills fruit trees and all cedars 
beast and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all people. So now he's bringing us in. We've got the heavens. We have the host. We have the stars, the sun, the moon. And now he says to the earth and he names everything on the earth in some form or fashion. And then he brings in us, kings of the earth, verse 11, and all people, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. I love that he starts with you great sea creatures. We were in Hawaii a few months ago, and it was whale season there, and, and I was captivated by these giant beasts, and they, they seemed like they were putting on a show for us. They'd splash up and roll over and spout and blow and it was beautiful. And as we were talking to some of the natives about the whales and asking all these questions, how do they get here every year and how do they know to come to the same place to have their their young, their offspring and how do they know how to journey? And he said, oh, you know, the whales, one of the main ways they get around is through the whale songs that they sing. And I got Psalm 148 all inside of me, and I'm like, no kidding, I, 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 I'm sure they do. And so I got to figure out what the whales sing, and so I start doing a little research, and I go online to find the whale songs, and I just want to bring it to you, because some of you living in Minnesota and don't even know where an ocean is, and so <laughs> the, the whale songs could sound like this right here. Take a listen. right in front of us tonight. That's, that's, what, that's what's happening in all creation. And I had this crazy idea, and I, I, um, I don't know if you know what a mashup is or not, but I had this crazy mashup idea. And I started trying to think, what would it be like to be God? Because we so elevate our, our songs, and that, this is no comment on, on what we've sung tonight. I'm a songwriter, and I believe in artists, and I, I believe in what we do in corporate worship through song and through music, and, and one of the expressions of our worship, but I don't think we have a clue, because we don't know the expanse of the worship that is continually surrounding the throne of God. And our songs are great, but God isn't banking on our songs, because He is surrounded by a symphony that's bigger than our wildest dreams tonight. Stars sing and whales sing and the birds fly. And I just tried to imagine what would it sound like if you could just for a second be God and hear what he hears. And I can't get us there tonight, but I, I came close. I had a friend who helped me with this little iPad program. And, and I'm not a DJ, but I, I just a little thing, just quickly, and I, I want you to see how this works. I, I brought this guy in. Um, he's um, not somebody that... That we had uh, going already, but um, I brought one guy in. He, he should, you should be hearing him by now. I don't know. Are we, are we on? Yeah, if we could get just a little more volume, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Just even a little more volume would be fantastic. Thank you. I'm kind of maxed out here. There we go. This guy, we didn't look at his picture. He's PSR B0329-54. And he's only rotating one and a half times per second, which is not all that much, but we need him in our little experiment we're going to do here, okay? Um, and then we had the Vela Pulsar. You remember the Vela Pulsar, right? So that's that guy. But that's a little too fast for what we're trying to do, so we're going to slow that down, okay? Now this is unedited. It's just... Two pulsars slowed down and put in sync with each other. It's not a real groovy crowd, I know, but I, I know where I am, but it's kind of groovy if you hear it. And some of you want to nod a little bit, but you don't know if that's allowed at a reform meeting. And so um, 
you just do as the spirit leads. But isn't that cool? That's just two pulsars. And so we're going to put the, uh, the millisecond guys in there. The ones you just heard, here they come. really clear like what are they singing and we tried this and you just got to know this is unedited we just dropped this on and this is what happened this is what they might be singing point is simply this, that God is a God who doesn't need anything, and he honestly doesn't need any of us. He doesn't need a band. He doesn't need a song. He's got a universe singing to him. He's got a symphony of praise going on, and if you just think about it, every time a a rose blooms and the pod pops, it pops. Now, I've never heard a pod pop before, but I don't know what it sounds like when billions of them do it every day. Or every bird's wings that flaps through the sky, every ocean wave that crashes on a rocky shore, every snowflake that flitters its way down and and lands softly and maybe even imperceptibly to you or me on, on a snowy ground. 
lightning and the wind that blows through the trees, but everything when a baby cries or a human being laughs, it's all of God's creation praising him. And I'm telling you, he is big and he is powerful and beautiful and amazing and expansive in every way. And he's who's asking the question. And that's why it's crazy. He didn't ask anybody to help him make the universe. He didn't need Einstein or Carl Sagan or anybody else. He said, I know how to make a universe. Watch this. Universe. 